10 years, but you never know how long it can take. It may, it may be forever, and it can be the start of a new uh, development that people are entrenched in such a building. They're probably um, uh, uh, eager to fight for it in the future. So the future is, uh, future is open, and even after, even after the squatting ban, even after the, the rise of the anti-squatting um, industry, but because of the, the bubble and real estate, I see possibilities for further development. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm a little difficulty from, from Rome, and uh, the Italian story is probably the, the most uh, uh, long-term experience in terms of squatting for a social center. I collaborate with a social center that is the largest in Italy. It's, uh, it's a castle, a castle of the 19th century that is squatted in Rome. And it's big, like, I think, twice the size of Washington Square. And uh, what, I, what uh, Ant was saying before about the Dutch government that were almost right-wing reactionary, well, Ita the Italian record is even worse. We had a dictatorship for 20 years with Mussolini, then we end up with a Christian democracy government for more than 40 years, and then we enter in the Berlusconi age for 20 years. So just to give you a very, very brief uh, idea of uh, how the reactionary forces are uh, well, uh, uh, let's say, <laughs> organized in our country. But uh, the social center um, idea uh, came out in the 80s after uh, a long cycle of struggles during the, the end of that started at the end of the 60s and terminated at the end of the 70s with a brutal police repression. So the whole autonomist idea, the whole feminist ideas that circulated in the 70s and they were brutally repressed at the end of that age uh, came out at, in the 80s with a new generation of people. And that made the idea of squatting to reclaim your rights. So you do not delegate other people. You do not expect the future to be changed by someone else or the context will change. Okay, you take your action to do what you like to do. I mean, you want to have a band playing music, okay, and you know that you need a space to play. How can you manage to do it if you don't have much money? So you organize people in a, in a direct way. You know this also here. So when in the middle of the 80s, uh, the, the Italian situation was terrible because all the, the movement in the 70s were crushed by repression and uh, we started uh, the, the idea of social center. It was literally uh, building some kind of ghettos in which we have to resist the, the previous defeat. Um, but the idea of ghettos uh, was a good idea at the beginning in which very different people gathered together. And for very different people, I mean something that was probably the, the generation of a new idea of, of circulating, fighting, discussing, in few words, self-managing a place. So that's the main word. It means that you have to organize with other people, you have to take decisions with other people, not based on the fact that there's someone taking a decision and you have to uh, just obey. It is something different. You have to fight, you have to struggle, you have to discuss things. And uh, so it's a complete different idea of democracy if you want. And you know this also, so nothing new. But what is new is the fact that in Italy, so in 1985, there was uh, a, a big squat in Rome, in, in the Forte, in this castle. And it was quite impressive for many people traveling for students that were in Rome. And so in Milan, there was also a big uh, old factory squat that, that started again their political activity. And so the idea circulated quite quickly. The fact that people could take these abandoned buildings we know that capitalism is producing emptiness in our cities is, and it exploits this emptiness to, for speculation reasons. So uh, you could take schools, castles, churches. I mean, the whole range of uh, architecture, catalog, buildings that were available. So there was a big wave of, uh, of squatting in 1986, 87, 88, and we managed to have like 100 places in a few years. So what, what made the, uh, the ghetto working was okay for two or three years, but then we need to break the ghetto. We need to be out. We need to be with, with all the rest of the people and organizing other things. 
In 1990s, we had uh, the social centers open, I think, to, to the rest of society. I mean, uh, I mean, we were people in the society, but it's, uh, this is a, a word that you use less here in the US than in Europe, but uh, here you use community, but the fact is that what I'm describing, I'm just a person in a big collective effort. I'm no one, basically. I mean, just I'm someone if I'm with other people doing things, and we are able probably to, to produce things that are outside the profit laws that are governing, I mean, they try to govern every sphere of our life from breathing the air until just producing shoes or producing uh, some materials. So uh, the idea is that we try, we experiment a social alternative in many, many aspects of our life. Art, theater is probably the most uh, famous kind part of, uh, of our work, but there are many other aspects now that are uh, covered by uh, these social experiments and practices. And we had a long-term experience because uh, the, the social centers in Italy now, they are still working and they're still 100. I mean, they changed in few cities, they were evicted. In other cities, there were uh, new squads. And we had three generations of people. So I um, must say that Italian experience is quite relevant when you, uh, if you go in different places, you see an heterogeneous group of people. And that makes the situation very difficult, particularly when you have intergenerational exchange of ideas, opinions, they have different languages, people that are 15 years old, they have to deal with people that are 60s, hippies from the 70s. I mean, it's uh, we have a whole bunch of people, and now social centers, I mean, now, since the last 20 years, they're representing, uh, I think, the society in, uh, in for, uh, for at least most of its uh, classes. Uh, not the upper classes, but mid, mid uh, low income classes are there. So it's not now representing just youth, angry youth, young people, or I don't know, marginal people. I mean, there are a bunch of people that are uh, squatting different social centers. And what's happening is that uh, we, I use social centers as a kind of label that cover a vast uh, range of experiences that are very, very different one each other. So uh, I think that the most important thing that I just want to say is that it is possible, even in a country that was uh, so reactionary as Italy, to build uh, experiences that are outside, uh, let's say, the, the, the whole idea of uh, having a very conservative society following the Vatican rules or following neoliberal your Berlin's dogmas. Um, so this is the the uh, I think the main message for for my for my experience. Yes. Yeah, so hello, everybody. Well, thank you for coming. So I'm Thomas. I come from Paris. Uh, maybe I can give you the, the context of squatting in, in France with some element of the history of the squatting movement in France. So the squatting movement was born more or less during the 19th century, in the middle of the 19th century, and it was a housing movement. So the squat was a tool to put a precarious family in houses during the 19th century until the middle of the 20th century, and after the Second World War, a new wave of the squatting movement emerged, and it was uh, more or less linked with the social, social Catholic movement, uh, because in, in Paris, for example, you have been out of war, as they had to rebuild many houses, and they, we had a big housing shortage. So the, the Catholic movement and association tried to put families into, uh, into buildings by uh, squatting. And then during the 60s, uh, a, a new movement emerged with the Maoist and Marxist uh, organization, and so also they, they squatted. And um, more or less, they were linked with the urban social movement, uh, with association, local association, which tried to resist against, uh, to struggle against the renovation program. Uh, so, for example, in Paris, you have um, the, the investors and the municipality, which tried to destroy and rebuild new uh, districts. So there was um, this, there was this squad resisting against this uh, renovation program uh, in, in the city. Um, 
And then during the, the 70s, uh, you had like a counterculture and artistic squads uh, which emerged. And so during the 60s, 70s, and 90s uh, in Paris and in other cities in, in, in France, we had big, big, uh, big squad with artists and uh, and Marxists and Arts people also. And during the, the 90s, we had a comeback of the housing movement with small groups. Uh, of people uh, who were involved in trying to put family against uh, homeless people and immigrant family, North African immigrant family, into uh, into buildings. Um, then, during the the last uh, ten years, other groups emerged. It was more political uh, groups who played with the media to make visible the housing shortage and the housing crisis in France. And so they play with the politicians and with the media to make visible this crisis by squatting buildings, symbolic buildings in, in the central part of the city, and uh, and to, to, to put visible to make visible the problem of housing in France. Um, so uh, maybe I can just give you some elements about the juridical uh, context in, in France. So in France, uh, squatting is not a crime; it's a civil procedure. It's not a penal procedure. So you. Um, are not going to jail. Uh, uh, it's a civil procedure. And more or less, the rule is that if you occupy a building or a house during 40, 48 hours, uh, then you can stay and the police cannot uh, evict you like that. So uh, the owner needs to make to go to the, to the judge. And, uh, and the procedure is like more or less two months to evict uh, so the, the, the person, people who are occupying the house. And, um, and, for, for, and the squad also, um, I, I forgot that there are many squads uh, in, in France which are invisible squads. So I mean small squads of apartments, precarious families, immigrants, clandestine <coughs> immigrants, who squat uh, small apartments and uh, go over they squat social housing. And so um, it's, uh, the owner cannot evict them like that. So uh, in France, the housing right exists and uh, there is a conflict between the property right, the ownership, and the housing right. So the judge uh, has to decide. Um, maybe um, yeah, on the organization of the different kind of squads, uh, for example, in Paris, so you have political squad, you have artistic squad, and you have uh, this housing movement squad. And the relation between these movements sometimes are, um, they, 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 are, they collaborate, but not so much, in fact. So you have maybe small movements that are close, and they don't want sometimes to, to collaborate with artists or political uh, squatters. So there is kind of fragmentation uh, of the squatting movement uh, in France, while, for example, in Spain, you have a very big movement, or in Ireland, etc. So there is a fragmentation, and it's not so strong. Um, um, yeah, and the relation maybe with, uh, with the politicians and the, the, the public actors uh, in France, maybe that makes it different with other countries, um, the city council, for example in Paris, which is a left-wing city council, more or less try to tolerate some kind of squats. Uh, squatters who have a project, cultural or social project, they can sign a contract with the municipality to stay and so more or less in Paris nowadays you have 20, 25, 20, 25 squads uh, who sign a contract and who, are, who have an agreement with the city council to stay in the place during one, two, three years. So they pay a rent and they can stay and provide social and cultural services. Uh, but on the other way, um, on the other hand, the city council repress uh, very actively immigrant squads and drug addict squads and, uh, and this kind of thing. And concerning the housing movements, we have a big, big group uh, in, in France, uh, which is called the Housing Rights Association, and which rehouse the families, North African families, by squatting, and then they put uh, pressure under the city council uh, to relocate and to rehouse these families, and they man and they they rehouse everybody with this procedure. So squat squatting is a tool to rehouse the family, and it's always a success with this group. Um, yeah, maybe I can, yeah, so I give the floor to Jake, who went to Paris uh, in December, one month, and she, she, so maybe she can give you an American point of view on Paris situation.
Sure. Um, I'm Jackie Feldman. I'm an American student and journalist who's right now in the middle of doing a reporting project on squats in Paris. So I spent um, about three 